us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Did you recognize the words that we just heard? The famous words from the Bible that are well, well known. They're called the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes. And at the beginning, it's at the beginning, the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, he starts off with this and it says, Jesus went up to the mountain, to the high mountain, and he sat and he taught his disciples saying these words. So the writer of the Gospel of Matthew is setting Jesus in a position of being the new Moses. Because remember, in the Old Testament, which we're studying now at our Bible study, we haven't got quite to the mountain yet, but Moses goes up to the mountain and that's where he encounters God. He has his experience of, of hearing what God wants from us from the mountain. So this is the place that Jesus is placed. And when it comes into the Gospel of Luke, it's called the Sermon on the Plain. And here it's called the Sermon on the Mount. But what is important is what he's saying, what he is saying to us. And what is he saying? He's saying words that would turn our typical expectations upside down. Upside down. Because we all know that people who mourn are sad. And people who are being persecuted are not exactly the happiest people in the world. And so in the world that we're living in now, the world that we're living in right now, even today, is not perfect. And Jesus is presenting a world that can be. Come on in and sit down and make yourselves comfortable. You notice that nowadays the teacher stands and the students sit. <laughs> or the pastor stands and the, and the congregation sits. But in Jesus' time, it was the other way around. If you were sitting down, you were the teacher. We don't think of that, you know. But that's what also why they're presenting him also as a rabbi. So here he is giving these beautiful, beautiful words. Blessed, blessed, blessed. Is there anyone here who wouldn't like to be blessed? Everybody loves to be blessed, right? We want to feel blessed. And it's, it's something very beautiful that we, that we desire, that we want for our lives. Everybody wants it. And we also try to give it. Now, I happen to be, this is just a little aside, a little short one, I'm going to Iceland in April. I've never been there. And my grandparents came over from Iceland in 1888. And they couldn't afford to get back because they were raising children and, and running a farm and they cried for their country all those years and then my father didn't get there and I've never been there and I'm going there. And so I, I'm not, I don't speak the language, I sing in the language and I can pronounce the language but I, don't, I only know a few words. But one of the most important words in Icelandic is like, is like in Hebrew you have shalom. You know shalom means hello, it means goodbye and it means peace. Well, in Icelandic, they don't have that exact meaning, but when they say hello and goodbye, guess what they say? Bless. Bless. That's the word, just B-L-E-S-S. -S. And it means hello, but it also is bestowing a blessing when you see the person and when you leave the person. So that, that, that's just a, a little aside. And one more aside, and then I'll get on with it. And that is that before my husband passed away, he... He recorded some, uh, he had been making CDs and he recorded a, a song for me. And he said, this is a song about, um, for you after I'm gone, um, about a person who's already died and he's talking to his, his uh, spouse, his, his wife, who is, who is still alive. I said, I never heard a song like that before. Has anybody ever heard a song like that? And this song was so beautiful and it has something about blessing in it that I find helpful to me and that said and it was kind of a compliment he didn't write the song but he found it it's an old song from probably about 1910 or 20 an early early song and and it says um loveliest brightest oh always as then she was 
as if he's looking down on me. Always as then she was lovely as bright as best, blessing and blessed. And then he repeats it, blessing <coughs> and blessed. Well, that song for me has held me up for two years now. I'm holding on to that because that is what I want to be. It isn't what I am, <laughs> but it's, what I, it's a goal for me. That's what I want to be in the rest of my life. And I think it's a, a thing to try to be blessing and blessed. And so that's a beautiful word. Now we don't want to give up that word blessing and blessed. And so we find out that in many of the various versions, English versions of the Bible, that it doesn't say blessed are they who do this and that and the other thing. It says happy. And you go, what? Happy. And we don't particularly like the word happy, but actually in the Greek that is pretty much what it says, happy. Happy are those. But what is happiness anyway, other than feeling loved and feeling good about ourselves, right? We want to feel good about ourselves and we, when we're happy. Otherwise, we're not happy. So the word makarios actually means happy, but usually in the Greek they were talking about the gods. Only the gods could be that happy. The human beings, not so much. So it's that kind of happiness that Jesus is talking about blessed or happy are those. And then he chooses people who are in such strange circumstances. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now, if you haven't been in mourning, you wouldn't think that you'd be comforted. But those of you who have lost somebody that you love very much, I think if we talk to each other, we're going to find out that actually we are comforted. God gives us some kind of little extra love that we can get by. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. If you've ever done the right thing yet, and you're being persecuted, which is something that happens quite often in this world when we do the right thing, I'm sure, then you know the happiness that comes from that or the sense of blessedness that comes from doing the right thing even though it's the world isn't reacting properly to that, we can sleep at night, right? Then you can sleep at night because then you know that at least you're doing, trying to do, we don't always accomplish it, but trying to do what God would have us do. Now these Beatitudes have been, have been used for teaching purposes and for for church and for people to try to learn from for how thousands and thousands for 2,000 years now. For 2,000 years we have 2,000 years of traditions from the church and from various places of how that those Beatitudes are interpreted. So think for a minute about how you might interpret them and then I'll mention a, a, a couple of different ways. The, the most popular way that they've, not popular, but the most l common way that they've been interpreted is pretty much as a, a teaching tool. Um, if you uh, follow, these, fo follow these various uh, things, uh, for example, uh, to be a person who is um, trying to be a better person by, by, by being uh, a peacemaker and by being righteous, doing the right thing and all of this, then you will get closer and closer to God according to those kind of teachings. So it's used to kind of, uh, <laughs> instead of being used to, to bless you, it's kind of being used to um, straighten us all out or something. I'm sure it has a lot of good uses in that regard, but I don't think that would be the main purpose of it, in my opinion, of the, of the meaning of that, of that passage but it has been used for people to work their way up to being more and more acceptable to God in their, in their own, uh, in their own um, community or in their own mind that they would, that they would be uh, working towards something, work, work, working their way up the mountain to get to the top of the mountain. The trouble with all that is that we have to try to be a better person, but that we are forgiven and loved and and blessed not by what our works, but by our, our the, the fact that God gives us free grace. God's love is free grace before we deserve it. 
And that's the gift of God. That, so that's a useful tool, but I don't think it would be the main one. Now the sick, another one, another way of interpreting the whole thing would be to see that, that just the way we were talking at the beginning, that, they, that God is giving us these gifts freely and uh, that the more we're suffering, the more likely we are to get them. And so that is a little bit dangerous also because then what about we say, okay, well, that person is hungry and that person is sad, but they'll be okay. I don't need to do anything because God is taking care of them. You know, kind of a spiritual interpretation that, that leaves out the, the, the community involved. And uh, so that can be, that can be tricky. There's a, another little version of that, and I, I don't like to mention names of other people, but uh, I don't know how many of you remember Robert Schuller of the Crystal Cathedral. He used to have a television program, and uh, I actually met him, in, I met him in China. People in my church down in Florida, they used to say, uh, elderly people would say, I'm sorry I wasn't there last Sunday, but don't worry, I watched Robert Schuller. So they saw, and I didn't know how to respond to that. But anyway, I met, him, I met him, and he's a very nice man, and apparently the whole thing has gone bankrupt now, so it was, there's some sorrow about that, but I'm sure he brought a lot of people happiness. But he had a different idea, and it was kind of a Norman Vincent Peale idea that, uh, that if, you, if, you, um, if you could be, if when you were sad you could be happy, you know, just make yourself happy, then everything would change. A, a kind of an idea that, that we have to work at being happy. And uh, you know, that, that's a common idea that's going around nowadays because I was driving through Virgil the other day and saw a big sign, I think it was on a winery, and it said, happiness is an inside job. <laughs> In other words, if you're not happy, it's your fault. <laughs> so I'm not sure that's exactly the right way to look at it either, you know. Now the third, um, well, that one wasn't, uh, that was just the second, uh, not the third one, but the third one is, is the third idea is that it's a way of building up community. And I think that could be useful, that we could use the Beatitudes to see uh, how we can build up our community. So um, in the end, there are, it's a simple thing, really. It's a very simple thing. First of all, God loves you. You are not suffering. So that's, uh, that's a way of, uh, of looking at it. So we receive, and then we turn around, and we give and serve. And then by doing those two things, we build community. Now this is an imperfect world we're living in. We all know how imperfect and seems to be getting worse. It sure feels that way a lot of the time, and frightening in many ways. And we have so much to be thankful for here in St. Catharines, here in this community, here at St. George's, here with each other, to be able to bask in the love and, and, and have the things that we need. But the world needs us to, to, to do something, and we can't do it if we don't feel and know that we're loved. But that love will sustain us. I, I think that... The way they used to say it often when, you know, when we were studying in school was that they'd say, we live in the now and the not yet of the kingdom of God. Because how can it be now? Because of Jesus Christ. That's how. Because he lived and taught us and died and was raised and God gave him to us to, to know that, that, that it's possible to live in the kingdom. And yet it's not yet. So we're, we're trying to build it, but we can't build it alone. We can only try to make our community closer to what, to the vision that Jesus has presented for us here and know that we're loved. And so I guess the last words that I have to say for this is bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, and bless this church and bless St. Catharines and bless our nation and our world that we will find the kingdom of God and God but chooses. Amen. Amen and ditto. <laughs>